Hey everyone, it's Sassy Assassin here with a rant style video about our girl, Amberlynn Reed. The reason why I'm doing this video is because I wanted to discuss um, her health issues. And I'm talking both about her mental and physical issues. Um, I, I'm frustrated. I have mixed feelings. Um, I'm disgusted and somewhat sympathetic to a degree. So recently Amberlynn Reed's been posting a lot of video, you know, s several videos about her health issues. Um, the first, you know, I'm going to talk about physical first because I have more experience with more physical health issues. Um, she recently had to go to the ER. She apparently has gone twice. I don't know. Um, but she was having abdominal pain and then later the bleeding in the belly button followed and um, as a person who has a lot of health issues I can understand being frustrated when you go to the hospital and you're scared and you have something going on that's not normal and you're in, in a, you know, a good amount of pain you know especially in the abdomen you know stomach pain, whatever, I can understand how scary it is, and you want to know what's going on. But the fact of the matter is, is that when you go to the ER and with random abdominal pain, it could be a lot of things. So they do run basic tests like urine and blood, but if they don't see anything significant to kind of make them worry, and make them feel like they need to do more testing, they're going to send you home really without any type of relevant diagnosis. They're just going to tell you to go to the doctor and seek you know, further treatment with your primary care. And um, I can understand how frustrating it is, because it is. I've gotten that even though I've had significant symptoms of, of certain things. But... Um, the, you know, ER doctors can only do so much, okay? And, um, it's just, I think Amber should have waited maybe a day. I don't know. I'm, that's, uh, she should have waited for more significant symptoms to appear rather than just having, you know, that kind of pain. Because, you know, you could have pulled a muscle or something. I mean, that, you know, it could have been that, you know? And, Sometimes when you pull muscle, you can get weird pain. Um, but if, you know, I would have gone when, if it were me, I would have gone when my belly button started to bleed. That was when I would have gone. Um, I know people are saying you can't rely on, you know, you know, like I said, you can't rely on ER our doctors all the time. And it's true. But for my case, it's, it's, a, it's difficult because I... I get frequent UTIs or symptoms like UTIs. I also have interstitial cystitis. And the problem with UTIs is that if you let it go for an extended period of time, it can go to your kidneys and you can get a bad kidney infection and get sick. My problem is is that my UTIs spiral out of control pretty fast and it can go to the kidneys pretty fast. So the time you know, I don't have a very big time time, you know, time period between the start of the infection and to full blown, I don't have time to wait for her to get into my primary care or my specialist. I have to go to the ER use frequently for it because I need to get it treated before it gets gets bad, or else I can end up with a bad kidney infection and I can end up being put in the hospital, you know, admitted into the hospital. So um, usually. It used to be that if you go to the ER, you can get into your primary care or specialist quicker, you know, you know, faster than you, you know, usual because you've been to the ER. But for, you know, that really hasn't been the case for a while. And so my only recourse a lot of times is to, you know, go to the ER because I can't wait a month or a week or two out to see the doctor when I'm dealing with these symptoms. Okay. So 
you know, I understand how frustrating it is even if you're showing significant system and you're known to have frequent infections and they know this, it's on your record and they just, you know, kind of write you off. It's frustrating. And I understand, I completely understand that the EER can only do so much, but that is personally what I am dealing with. Okay, now in Amber's case, she's not a person that frequents ET, you know, ERs and doesn't have a chronic, you know, issue like that, you know, chronic issue, um, like that, and, um, you know, they're, they're gonna, if they don't see, like I said, they don't see something significant enough, they're just gonna write it off and send her home. Now, I, we don't know what happened with a, with a bloody, um, belly button. I, I mean, I'm not a doctor, I'm not gonna diagnose, but I heard it could be a skin infection due to lack of hygiene or hernia. I mean, who knows? I mean, being a big person, you know, you, you have, and you have to clean yourself every day. And you, especially under those folds, because skin infections like yeast rash and everything, that can happen very quickly. And somebody with her, with her size, you, you have to clean yourself every day. With, whether you do it by the shower, or you do a sponge bath, you do it. You get it done. You powder and you clean and you make sure you, you just get it done. Okay, you and you stay clean. That is the only way to prevent these kind of problems. And I don't honestly sometimes I when I see videos of her, it looks like she hasn't showered in, in a while. She hasn't washed her hair. That can cause issues if you're doing it a, a long period over time. It's just your body is going to start to react to it in, in negative ways. Um. But you know who knows? Who knows what's going on with her? I I don't know. I'm not, I'm like I said. I'm not going to diagnose. But um, I, you know, don't have sympathy for her in a lot of ways because she has had years and years to deal with all these issues. She could have should have gotten help a long time ago, and you know if she would have gotten help and, and been smart, she wouldn't have gotten this big and she wouldn't have had to deal with these issues. Now, as for her mental issues, I'm not, I don't have, you know, I've never had, um, well, I went to see, I, I, I've seen a psych, a, a counselor when I was younger and I was a teenager when I was having some issues, but I've never been diagnosed with anything, you know, significant. I'm mentally, I'm pretty healthy. Um, I've dealt with depression, okay, and I do worry that I'm, maybe I have, some form of bipolar, I don't know, but um, usually when I've seen counselors, they kind of, um, see, I see them for a while, you know, um, when I was younger, I saw her for about a year or so, and at the end of it, she said, you know, you just, you're not, you know, you just have some depression, but um, you're really, there's really nothing significant going on with you. You know, and she said, "You're, you know, I'm giving you a, a, a bill of health. You know, you don't have to see me anymore." Um, so like, yeah, I don't have a lot of experience with that. Um, but I have family members that do, and um, you know, usually it takes a while to get a proper diagnosis if you if you're suspected of having multiple mental health issues. It does not take one visit to diagnose somebody who is suspected of it. it just it's, it's for her to come back with a video and say, I went to the psychiatrist once and now I'm an authority on, on, on the subject. And now, well, she didn't really act like an authority, but she kind of had that authoritative sort of s speech. And she was acting like, I've been diagnosed. After one visit, it's like it's impossible. I'm. That's why I somewhat call bullshit on this, because it's just no or bullshit or this psychiatrist or counselor that she's seen is not very good because no reputable doctor would even dream of diagnosing a patient after one visit. It takes a while. Now maybe they want to start her off with some sort of mood stabilizer to see if it will help. Okay, maybe you know they're willing to do that. I don't know. I'm not gonna call complete bullshit, but it's just like 
I can't help but wonder, you know, it makes you wonder when you have a person like Amber who has lied and manipulated the audience to such a degree that's just honestly ridiculous to come in and say, I've been diagnosed, everybody. It's just like, hmm, you know, I don't know. It's just, uh, maybe she misinterpreted. I don't know. We weren't there, but it's just, there's no way. There's no conceivable way she could have been properly diagnosed with multiple disorders without having to see, without having seen that psychiatrist or counselor multiple times. It's just, no, I call bullshit. So, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't like her. Okay. I'm not going to say hate. I think hate is a strong word, but I don't like her. I think she is a despicable person. I think because she's, she lies and manipulates and it's just, it's a real big turn off and it's just disgusting. And I think now she is using her mental illness and physical illness as a way to garner sympathy and to, you know, try to, you know, ma further manipulate the audience because she doesn't really have a lot of cards to play anymore. And she's reaching into her bag of tricks and it's, she's running up nearly empty. And so this is her next um, thing to play is that, oh, I have mental and physical issues. So this justifies my behavior and, you know, you can't be mad, you know, you, you know, you, you, you can't be mad at me because of this. I have these issues. You know, there, you know, there's no reason she is conscious of what she's doing and she knows it. So there's no reason why she should be doing it. She should, you know, there's no reason you should, it's not a lot. I shouldn't be allowed. You know, you're an adult Amberlynn Reed. There's no reason you should be acting like this. I can understand if it's hard, you have a hard time. And if your mental issues, your issues make it hard, but it's not justifiable, you know? If you act like a bitch and you act and you send out negativity on a consistent basis, you're going to get negativity back from people. And people are going to start, you know, getting sick and tired of your BS, which has happened. Which has happened. I mean, for a long while now, people are just like, you know what, Amber? You've had so many opportunities to change and you haven't. And now you're crying and getting upset because you're getting criticized by people like Michael B. Petty, like um, Zachary Michael and Sabine. Like, I got really pissed off when she went after Sabine. Like, I, Davis, I'm like, bitch, you know what? Like, that woman is so down to earth and so nice and just really on, you know, on point and, and very wise. And for you to go after her like you did on this, try to go on the smear campaign, it's like, mmm, that just really ticked me off. And another YouTuber I like that talks about Amberlynn Reed is Shaquanda Jefferson. She is so funny and just so, like, blunt and to the point and just tells it like it is. And she can relate because she ha herself has mental issues. And, you know, she's been through a similar situation like Amber has. And it's like, I don't, I mean, you know, she has a, she's had a, she has a past, but she doesn't act like Amber. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. I think, you know, we're, we're all different and we all re react differently. But, you know, Am, but then there comes a point where it's just like, you know, you choose. You know, you, you choose how you deal with it. And Amber chooses to lie, manipulate, and just not deal with it. And it's just, and then she wonders why she's getting the response she's getting. Because, hey, I mean, people are only going to, like I said, they're only going to deal with so much before they're just like, eh, nope, you know, and they're going to tell you about it. So, it is what it is. It is what it is.
And I really hope I, 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 I hope that she wasn't going to use her health issues. But I think she is. This is going to be something that we're going to be seeing for a while, for, for a while now because, you know, she's going to think, well, they can't argue and, and criticize me because I have health issues and, you know, it'd be wrong, morally wrong. No, you know, I think, you know, too much, you know, I've seen people really go hard on her unnecessarily. And then, you know, there's, there's making, there, you know, there's a difference between being, making fun of and being a hater and giving constructs, you know, criticism. Some of it's constructive, some of it's kind of cruel. I mean, you know, it's just a variety. It's just, but you know what, is that the, the criticism that she get is being written off as hating. And I, you know, I used to be, you used to subscribe to her on YouTube. I used to follow her on Twitter. I got blocked on Twitter. I'm not sure. I think I got blocked on Instagram as well. I'm not sure. But it's just like, I got written off as being a hater because I was giving her what I thought would be constructive criticism. But, you know, if she can't handle the truth. I don't, I don't know what the duck face was for. I'm sorry about that, guys. I was kind of trying to think about what to say. Um, she can't handle construct any type of criticism, but she she revels in attention. She it it doesn't matter whether it's negative or positive attention. It's attention, and she'll do whatever it takes to get that attention so she can get money. And she and she said, "Well, you know, my health is more important than money, honey. You need money at this point to." continue to get, you know, your health taken care of because you stupidly continue without medical insurance. And even after every, even after this incident, she still isn't going to get medical insurance. I do not understand it. I literally do not understand it. Get the fucking medical insurance and stop being an idiot about it. Like you are 600 fucking pounds and over. You do not have the luxury of just winging it. Like Oh my lord, like I can understand if maybe you couldn't afford it, okay, and you were having financial issues, but you are not having financial issues, you're making more money than a lot of people are these days, and you can afford it, like there's no reason why you can't, you could afford a pretty good insurance plan, like if, I wish I had the money, because I'd be helping my parents to afford better health insurance, because I had, I mean, and I, you know, you know, also also pay for my own weight loss surgery and shit. But it's just like you're wasting away your money by binding random shit and I mean that you don't need and clothes that you really can't fit into by a tour because it you know it 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 you're trying to fill something inside of you that is you that is oh, this big hole that it's never gonna be filled by random shit and 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 clothes. It, you need to search with, I mean, she needs to search with inside herself and go deep and to, like, figure out who she is as a person and what she wants to do with her life instead of YouTube. Because I think YouTube is harming her more than it's helping her. But it's her only source of income because she can't work. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. She could actually work from home, okay? Yeah, she wouldn't be making the money. I mean, she could actually continue YouTube not as frequently, and also get another job, okay? And then slowly get off YouTube, you know, as she um, gets used to doing the job. She could do, like, customer service and shit like that. Um, I don't know. There's a lot more, you know, work-from-home jobs becoming available because that's something that I'm looking into. And... Um, it's just there are options out there for people like her and people like me. Because people think, or I used to think, well, YouTube is their only recourse. No, she could actually get a job, a job job, at working from home. I'm not even kidding. So it's not as if she has to completely rely on YouTube. There is still something out there that she could do. Um... So yeah, there's no excuse. 
because I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm looking into, um, maybe, um, trying to get a job at a hospital, patient registration, you know, you got to train for it, but you don't need a lot of experience for it, um, because, uh, due to some issues, I can't go back to school right now, so I, I, I want to at least do something that, it's not going to be the greatest of pay, but, you know, it'll be something, um, because I'm done with the job that I'm doing now that I wasn't getting paid for, and I want to do a job that I'm going to get paid for. Um, I don't know, but I am looking around for a job right now, and um, looking into what I want to do for the rest of my life, because I'm, I'm, I'm on, I mean, I'm honestly having to um, just making some changes, major changes, and just trying to figure out things out career-wise, and, um, so I was just thinking about Amberlynn, you know, when it comes to that with Amberlynn Reed, it, she could get an actual job that's not YouTube and work from home still. It's just, there's not many jobs, but it's just like she could do, like, customer service and shit, or, you know, you know, whatever. I mean, it's not like she's completely having to be reliant on YouTube. I, yeah, it's a lot of money that she's making and she's really kind of um, made a killing. But it's just like, if it were me and if I was on YouTube, I wouldn't rely on YouTube for my source of income just because of how changeable it could be and it could, you know, you could, you could lose all, you know, you could ruin your career in a second and lose all that money and that income. So it's just like, I would rather find something st stable, something that I know I could rely on instead of relying on YouTube. And, and basically, as she's killing herself, pu publicly kill show killing herself on YouTube, like, so eating herself to death and showing it. I mean, it's very morbid and it's just, I just, I honestly think YouTube is just not healthy for her. I, I just don't think it's good. She says she likes to, to share, the, you know, whatever. It's, she may like it, but it may, you know, just because she wants to do it, it's it just not the healthiest thing for her. But, I don't know. I'm kind of thinking the same way myself when it comes to YouTube videos and my weight loss journey. I'm wondering, is it really healthy for me to do this? Because I feel like ever since I started the my weight loss journey videos, like, I, I it's gotten kind of worse. You know, like, um, no, how do I say this? Um, I've had, you know, issues, um, being consistent and staying on track ever since I started the video. So I don't know if, you know, if I continue to make videos and it continues to get even worse and worse, I may stop my weight loss journey videos and, you know, just do random, like, ambulant rude reactions. I don't know. Just because if it, if I feel like it's not healthy for me, I will stop it. Like, I, I just thought, you know, I'd take a whack at it and see, uh, you know, but I don't know. I think it's just because for me, just being afraid of disappointing viewers, that's my main thing. And being held accountable to the viewers. And I'm just, when I see how Amberlynn and Reed is treated and how they go after, how people, you know, me, you know, because there are some people that go after Amber Lynn Reed harshly, too harshly, and just, it's just too much, and I look at that, and I don't want to be in that situation, because it's, it can be mentally, I imagine it can be mentally, um, exhausting, and just, it's, you know, being feel degraded like that, but then again, like I said, Amber Lynn Reed has done a lot of the shit to herself, so, it's just a two-way street, I guess. Anyways, so that's pretty much my my reaction, my take. I I haven't watched July, you know, her video upload on July because July tenth. Um, just because I haven't had time, I want to, but obviously it's not going to be on her channel because I don't click on her videos anymore, like on her channel. But I will find. I I was I was if I've I've watched like what. Two, three or three or four minutes of 
of her video that she uploaded on July 10th, the one depicting her 84, 89 pound weight loss. You would think that um, after posting the video about her going to the ER that she'd want to post part two, but instead she decides to post how I lost 89 pounds. No, you need to do part two right away because people are going to want to know like what happened. Like that's just so fucking clickbaity and so cringy. Like what the fuck? Anyways, um, I have to get better get going because I gotta change this my, this bra because I mean I'm gonna go out but see look how it's doing that. Like I don't know what the hell. So um yeah I got and I want to know uh, if you can see it but how you, what you guys think of my my makeup. Okay um. I'm not very good at makeup, okay? Like, I try, okay? Um, especially eyeshadows, eyeliner, my worst thing. I, um, but if you want to know what I'm wearing, um, primer is Tatcha Lumin Tatcha, um, Silk Canvas. Um, I also use um, the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue, and then. To sort of give them a little bit more coverage, I use the Armani Luminous Silk 3.5 is my shade. Um, yeah, I better get going because my parents just came in. But, uh, yeah, Morphe for eyeshadow, Benefit for eyebrows, um, I use Lancome Powder and then um, Fenty Moon Metal. Um, kilowatt highlighter. So, and then better than sex mascara. Anyways, I gotta go. So.